So the few companies that control genetically modified foods like to tell the public that they're creating these foods to, f what they'll say is to feed the starving world. The implication is that they have this kind of great humanitarian impulse to feed starving people. Now, this is a great marketing idea because what it does is it, it, it makes people think, oh, they're, they're, they're very altruistic people. That's number one. And also it makes them not think about the fact that what they're really doing is feeding Americans. So it's actually a disingenuous claim and uh, it's kind of r false on both fronts because they're not only not feeding the developing world, what they are doing is feeding us the wrong kind of food. So as I have I said earlier, most of the GMOs that go into the food system go into the American food system, not the developing world. And the food that they're feeding Americans is actually like the least healthy, highest calorie, lowest nutrition food that we eat. So we're talking about, like I said, cheap processed chips, soda, fast food. That's what GMOs is creating. Now, it is true that genetic engineering is capable and is in fact doing some work that is beneficial to developing countries. It is not being done by these companies. It is being done by usually university researchers that are doing this with public research money. So there are great stories about researchers who are creating, for example, um, uh, grains or vegetables that have an increased nutritional profile thanks to genetic engineering. So for example, uh, there, there are researchers who have been working for decades on something known as golden rice, which is to take a rice plant and change its genetics so that it expresses beta carotene. So when people eat it, they get vitamin A in their bodies. And a lot of these cultures, especially in Asia, that live uh, rice-based diets are not getting enough uh, vitamin A. So you give them this genetically modified rice, so the theory goes, and now they are no longer uh, giving birth to children that become blind or die when they're young. Now that, that is a seems like a reasonable project. It is not being financed by these big companies. You have other researchers that are doing things like that in Africa where they're building, um, there's, a, there's a root crop in Africa called cassava. We don't eat it much here, but cassava is a very high calorie food that is very common in Africa. And they're also trying to turn on the beta carotene in cassava. Normal cassava looks white. You add this beta carotene gene in it and it looks orange. And now people can get both calories and vitamin A. So that is a nutritional enhancement of a product that is being done with genetic engineering. That seems to be a defensible use of the technology. It's not being done by these companies. And you can see why. There's no billion dollar market in cassava for poor farmers in Africa. Where the money is, is in getting more junk food into Americans and increasingly, I should say, uh, more junk food into other countries. So you're starting to see these companies now in a very uh, unsettling way, pushing into South America, for example, in both ways, both in the production of this kind of food and the uh, the marketing of the food product. So in places like Paraguay, Argentina, Brazil, these companies are going in there and uh, they're having rainforest cut down, which of course we can't afford given climate change, replacing the, the uh, rainforest with these monocultures of corn and soybeans in order that they can then create more cheap meat and cheap processed food. Now, the cultures down there uh, are being subjected to massive marketing campaigns. So you see you know, people pushing wheelbarrows through these poor villages trying to get people to eat Doritos and drink Coke and eat Nestle's and all this just because they've got to expand their market somehow. The American diet is already saturated with this stuff. Now they're trying to expand it into the South American market. So the problem with this is that these companies have a lot of control and a lot of power and economic might, but they're pushing the wrong kind of stuff both on the United States and now uh, around the world as well. That is, a, that is a myth. Uh, it is, it is not, it's, a, it's true at a very small level. I mean, if you take the number of GMO crops that are being nutritionally enhanced to benefit developing countries, that is true and it is also a tiny, tiny vanishing fraction of the total uh, genetic modification of food generally. The vast, vast majority of genetically modified food is being dumped on the American diet and now increasingly on the global diet. It is the opposite of nutritionally dense food. It is calorie dense food. It f makes people fat, this stuff. It does not increase their health. So it is 
true that the engineering, the technology can be used to make nutritionally enhanced food or drought resistant crops or flood resistant crops. That is true, but that is in the scale of all of the food industry, a tiny fraction of what is actually happening. Thank you.